everybody. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at one of my recent Amazon purchases. This chainsaw. Um, at the time, this was the cheapest big saw that I could find on Amazon. Um, if you've watched any of my other videos, I did. This is one of the first videos that I ever made um, about kind of going through one of my uh, grandfather's old Husqvarna chainsaws that he just had sitting in the uh, in the woodshed over at his place. I uh, got that out, I uh, went through it, got it fired back up. I've been using that for probably about two years now. And earlier this spring, uh, I think I finally killed it. I uh, haven't had a chance to look into that um, and figure out what went wrong with it yet. I still have it sitting out in the yard barn. Um, but the way things are going right now, I uh, just didn't have time to, to tear into that. And I do have other saws that I could have used, but I um, figured what better, better opportunity uh, than that to pick up some Chinese junk off the internet and test it out and see if it works. Um, so like I said at the time, this was the cheapest big saw that I could find. Um, it's a 62cc. Um, I think there's several variations of this saw uh, for sale on Amazon, come in all sorts of different colors and everything, but uh, generally they're all built the same. Uh, right off the bat, there were a few things that I liked about it. Um, a lot of the things that are typically plastic uh, when you look at major manufacturers like Husqvarna and Still, um, some of their newer stuff. Um, a lot of the handles are plastic and sometimes even the, uh, the cases are plastic on them, which to me just never made sense and that was always kind of a turn off. And that's one of the things that I liked about the Echo that I have out in the shed is that one is all, uh, all metal. The case on that one is um, some sort of magnesium alloy, I think, I don't know off the top of my head. but. Uh, and same same case with this one, and like I said, that was sort of one of the one of the draws to it. Um, I've got probably 10 to 15 hours on this saw now, um, mostly cutting oak, um, dry, dead standing oak uh, over at my other property. Uh, I've also cut quite a bit of softer woods like popple with it. Haven't had any issues with it so far. Um, never sharpened the chain on it yet. Um, still goes through logs like butter which was surprising to me because uh, out of the box the chain doesn't look that great it feels kind of flimsy um, I'll give you a closer look at it here in a second but um, overall you know I think I paid a yeah it was $150 at the time and I think a year or two ago they used to be cheaper uh, maybe even around $100 um, but still for $150 I figured what the hell I'll uh, give it a shot um, at the time, like I said, I didn't really feel like going back and spending $500 on uh, a Husqvarna or a Still or something like that. But um, you know, It feels pretty good in my hands. Um, overall, like I said, everything seems pretty solid. There are a few parts about it that just feel um, very Chinese, I guess, and that would be mostly everything back here on the handle. A lot, a lot of the plastic is just sort of um, flimsy and it's got real sharp edges on it. Uh, it doesn't feel great in the hand, but you know, it's a chainsaw. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, I mean, if most people are like me, it's like, you know, you're gonna use something to, to do a job. It's not necessarily always about comfort. Um, I suppose maybe that'll change as I get older. Um, but anyway, uh, let's take a little bit of a closer look at it here and uh, the things that it came with. All right, let's take a look at the rear of the saw here in the handle area. Um, the throttle lock is kind of goofy on it, but it does have a throttle lock, which is nice. Um, a lot of other saws that I have, I know my Echo doesn't have a throttle lock, and I kind of wish it did, but then again, you know, a lot of times it doesn't need it, and the uh, choke is just fine, but anyway. Um, like I said, it, it works, but the lock mechanism itself is just a little bit funky. Um, you got to have the throttle just in the right position, otherwise the lock won't go into place. See right there, I'm uh, pushing on it and it's not going in, but then if I drop the throttle a little bit, it goes in and it does hold just fine. Uh, it's got a nice toggle switch here, on and off, and the stop position is labeled um, on a lot of my older saws. Uh, the marks wear off and stuff like that and uh, you know you can't tell um, which position is off and which position is on um, yeah and that's it might just be me but sometimes I have a hard time remembering and I'll sit in there pulling on the saw and it won't start and I'll finally remember that hey I probably have the 
kill switch in the uh, wrong position but the other thing that I do like about it here is that stop is down um, to me that just makes sense it's the easiest motion to go to you know if you have some sort of a problem your thumb is back here all you got to do is and I mean you know, personal preference someone might say that they like it the other way because then all you'd have to do is you know flick your thumb up and you can kill a saw just like that but I've always liked the down position so uh, and then your choke is just a standard pull choke um, there's just one position um, no half choke or anything like that I suppose you could pull it out to the half position if you wanted to um, but there's no detent there for half choke so it's just in or, in or out so full choke or nothing and like I said earlier this whole back section of the saw just it doesn't feel good in the hand um, like my echo actually has I think some rubber padding on the handle back here so that's pretty nice um, and then my old Husqvarna that was all all metal and over the years of use um, you know between my grandfather my dad and myself um, that's just it's been worn down to the point that it just feels really good on the hand there's no sharp edges or anything like that but but back here it's just there's a lot of a lot of ridges and stuff on the plastic and it just it doesn't feel great but um, you know it's like be a man <laughs> use the tool and and get used to it but I know some for some people comforts a big deal but And everything back here is pretty much, you know, like any other saw. Just got your air cleaner. I mean, I don't know how well you can see that there, but, uh, you know, it's obviously doing its job. It's already picking up debris. Um, and again, on the inside of there, you got your carburetor and your spark plug. I'm not going to go into that too much in detail because there's really no reason to right now. Um, it is kind of a royal pain in the ass to get this cover to fit back on here correctly. It just doesn't fit all that well. And even after I get it screwed on here, the fit all the way around with the rest of the plastic cover just isn't isn't great but again for hundred and fifty dollars you can't expect it to be perfect and I mean it's it's plenty good so um, again for what you're paying I think you're kind of getting a pretty good deal here um, I don't know if I mentioned it or not uh, the saw does come with the plastic sheath for the bar uh, it comes with a 20 inch bar and a 14 inch bar and a chain to go with each um, and then it also does come with a little toolkit um, right off the bat the toolkit is Pretty nice. Uh, it's got everything in there that you would need. Comes with a little rat tail file for uh, sharpening the chain. Um, there's a nice small little screwdriver in there for adjusting the uh, high, low range, and idle settings on the carburetor. And uh, it does come with a scrunch as well. Um, I'll grab that and a nice little carrying carrying kit. Um, I think it also came with a mixing bottle for the the uh, the oil and gas mix, um, and then of course a manual and stuff like that. But um, I'll grab that here in a little bit and we'll take a closer look at that. Um, I have the 20 inch bar on there right now. Um, to me that just makes sense for what I do. Um, I don't know too many people out there that would put a 14 inch bar on a 62cc saw. Um, to me that just doesn't pair very well. Um, but you never know. I mean it's just nice to have a spare bar to, to be able to pop right on there if for whatever reason you, you know, have a problem with the 20 inch bar and you got still got a spare one laying around that can, can get you through until you get a new bar. But um, overall this plastic sheath is not great but again for what you pay for it at least it comes with something um, sliding it on and off the bar I've already put a couple of nicks and holes in it just from catching the chain um, so it is it is pretty thin a thin plastic material but then I guess on the other hand that kind of speaks volumes for how sharp the chain is out of the box and I, like I said I've not sharpen this chain at all yet and uh, I've filled this bed up of the truck with oak I think twice now um, so it's it's been doing a pretty decent job it does have a chain break this isn't, ju isn't just a handle uh, it's a full-on chain break it does work and it works quite well um, my only complaint is that it's just a little too eager to go into the locked or the brake position. Um, I've had it a couple times where I've just tapped it 
and uh, it's locked the, the chain up on me, but I guess I'd rather have that be the case than you know it not work at all. Um, but um, very, I guess a definitive snap in the place there when it's on, you know it's on and it releases um, and you know it's released. Um, so that's pretty nice. But overall, this handle for the chain brake does feel, again, pretty flimsy. And again, it's got the sharp plastic edges on it. Doesn't feel great when you grab it to use it, but um, it is functional. And speaking of things that just don't feel right, uh, the recoil on this saw is, it's weird. Um, it's, I don't know if it's got something to do with some sort of integrated like compression release because there is no compression release uh, button or lever on this saw anywhere. But um, you grab the saw, or I should say grab the recoil to pull it and it's, um, it's almost like it's got 10 to 12 inches of like, it's almost like you're pulling on a, on a rubber band. You know, the rope is real um, springy. And like I said, you've got about 10 to 12 inches of play and then it finally kicks in and rolls the engine over. So that's my best guess is that it's something to do with uh, the compression release mechanism to start the saw. Um, I've never had a saw that, uh, that you know, or, or any piece of power equipment for that matter that has a recoil feel like that. Uh, <laughs> it's a little surprising when I grabbed it out of the box the first time and tried to pull it over. Um, I about, you know, tore my shoulder out of its socket. <laughs> it, uh, it just, it just didn't feel right. But, uh, after the first five or six times of pulling on it, you kind of get used to it. And, uh, I would say that's kind of the overarching theme with this saw is that, you know, nothing is perfect. Uh, nothing is exactly what you want it to be, but for $150, you get used to it. And, uh, it definitely does cut wood. Um, you know, if you're just looking for something to trim trees around the house or, you know, you don't, don't heat solely with wood and you just have a, a wood stove or something like that or for a cabin, you know, I, I would, like I said, I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't use it as my primary saw, but it's definitely something that I would just throw in the back of my truck and leave there, um, you know, as part of a, whatever you want to call it, emergency kit, I guess, um. But so far, I've had absolutely no issues with it. Uh, it starts right up whenever uh, whenever I pull the handle. So uh, we'll look at some of the stuff that is, I guess, kind of weird now. The one thing that really threw me off, but again, not really that that big of a deal. So let's take a look at that real quick. So you can see right there in that sticker, uh, the fuel mixture ratio it says it's 25 to one. Um, and if you look in the manual, it also says it's 25 to one. But if you hop over down there, and I know you guys can't see it, but just trust me. Uh, if you look on the fuel cap itself, it says mix it 40 to 1. Um, and, you know, it probably doesn't make that much of a difference whether you go with one or the other. Um, but to get the maximum life out of the saw, uh, I decided to run the 25 to 1 mixture. And other than smoking like a chimney, um, I haven't had any issues so far. It's not following plugs or anything like that. It runs just fine. Um, I did have to tune the high side, um, with, like I said, with the screwdriver that comes with the carburetor, but uh, once I got that tuned up, the thing just rips through logs like, like it's nothing. So uh, overall, like I said, after adjusting the carburetor and running the 25 to 1 fuel mix, um, I haven't had any performance issues with it so far. Um, so going forward, that's my plan. Uh, I'm going to stick with that uh, little bit uh, higher fuel to oil mix. So I can hear kind of at the business end of the saw. Um, it does have metal dogs on it for bucking. That's really nice. And like I said, the case, this is all, it's all metal. I'm not exactly sure what kind of metal it is. It definitely seems like some sort of uh, magnesium alloy. Uh, and I believe the handle here is also some sort of alloy. It might just be straight aluminum. I don't think it's aluminum. It's got to be some sort of mixed metal. But, um, you know, in my eyes, anything is better than plastic. So any kind of metal, much better than plastic. Um, so I was happy to see that. Um, you know, as far as tensioning the chain goes, this works like pretty much every other uh, saw out there on the market. You've got your, your two studs here and nuts that hold tension on the bar. And then your um, chain tension screw, adjusting screw is right there. Um, I've had saws that have this on the inside of the bar, saws that have it in the same position, and saws that actually have it, um, you know, down here. And this is definitely my preferred uh, position to have the tensioning adjustment. Um, I've had it, like I said, here on the chain brake cover, and that just does not seem to work as well for some reason. Um, and then having this on the inside, 
you know, it's it's fine, but then you're trying to reach around the bar, and it's, I don't know, it just makes sense to me to have it on the outside, so I'm glad to see that they did that. Um, you know, I'm not 100% sure which design uh, this company is copying, but if I if I had to venture a guess, I would say this is probably some sort of Husqvarna clone. Um, that's what, uh, you know, other than the color, the general shape of everything uh, really seems to me to mimic uh, Huskies. Uh, I guess, you know, let's grab that uh, toolkit and take a look at that real quick. All right, so included with the saw, uh, as I said earlier, you get a little mixing jug for your fuel oil um, mixture. I don't think I'm ever going to use this for anything. Um, I typically what I do is just, you know, if it's a separate oil mixture like this one, I don't have anything else that runs 25 to 1. So just go ahead and pick up a, um, a gas can that's dedicated for that. But, um, you know, like I said, it, it does come with it. It's perfectly functional. You could use it if you wanted to. Um, so good on them for that, I guess. Um, and here is the additional 14 inch bar and the chain to go along with that. Um, the 20 inch bar comes packaged the same way. Chain comes in this case and the bar is encased in its own little plastic sheath. Um, and then over there is the little toolkit that it comes with. It does have a, a little case for that. Um, you've got Allen wrenches to um, fit the, the Allen bolts that are on the saw. Um, you've got a little screwdriver, like I said, that works for tuning the carburetor, a little uh, rat tail file to sharpen the chain, and then your scrunch. So um, literally everything that you need uh, to maintain a chainsaw comes with the saw. So I got to hand it to the company for doing that. Uh, that's pretty nice. Uh, they're not quality tools by any means, but again, they get the job done for 150 bucks. So um, I think that's kind of the main takeaway here is if you're, you know, you're looking for something that seems to be halfway decent, um, you know, you're not going to be making a living with it going out logging every day, but if you're like me and, you know, you just have trees around your property uh, that you know, you're always falling over, uh, maintaining trail systems through the woods or, you know, you know, I'm off on logging roads on the weekends, you know, running down coyotes or going over the cabin during deer season or something like that, a tree falls over, you know, it's just a, a good thing to have in the back of the truck, so... And, uh, you know, for doing stuff like that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go out and spend 500 plus dollars on a, you know, a pro saw from one of the main manufacturers because it's, you know, it's just not fiscally responsible, not a financially smart thing to do. Um, so again, for the price point, I think this is a decent deal. Um, is it going to last? I have absolutely no idea. Um, you know, I'll be, I'll be happy if I get two years out of it before it grenades, but... Um, again, not that I think that's going to happen. I've seen other reviews of similar saws like this on the internet, and um, you know, people keep them for five, five plus years, and you know, they're still running strong. But um, like I said, I, it's not something that I would use um, on a daily basis. But uh, at the very least, here, I guess let's fire it up, and uh, maybe we'll even go out and cut something. Uh, so as always, safety first. Uh, you're going to want to make sure you have on uh, your shorts and your Crocs. Um, once you're uh, once you're sure you got your safety gear on, uh, you're gonna go ahead and go to the full choke position. Make sure that your start or kill switch is in the on position. Once you hear it fire, choke goes into the off position. So I just took a quick walk around the uh, property at the house here, and unfortunately I don't have any blowdowns or uh, any standing dead here, and I don't really want to cut down anything alive at this point. Um, so probably won't get to cutting down anything today, um, but I will definitely be making 
a few trips over to the hunting land and probably over to the grandparents property and uh, cutting some more um, dead oak at some point here in the near future um, so when I do that I will definitely try and get some footage of this thing in action uh, I have some small stuff you know branches laying around the yard and on the trails that I want to get cleaned up but you know cutting through a three inch diameter stick isn't really going to do this thing justice so uh, like I said uh, when I get to, to that point and uh, go out to cut some more wood I'll uh, I'll film some some videos of the saw in action and we'll throw those up on the channel and uh, you can you can see how she does but like I said generally um, if you're not looking to spend the money to buy you know a decent homeowner saw or a pro saw from one of the big manufacturers um, something like this is just fine uh, I would say so you know hop on Amazon check it out you can find stuff um, smaller smaller less CC smaller bar stuff like that for less money um, but I think you know for someone like myself um, if you got a couple acres around your house you're taking care of uh, this is a great option and at $150 it's it's really hard to beat so there you have it any questions uh, anything else you want to know that I missed just as always let me know drop a comment and uh, thanks for watching we'll see you in the next one